Lamar Jackson is definitely 2019 MVP Slim now it may get spooky Shout out to my guy Nitty Gritty Sports Talk Who is the originator of that quote If y'all won't give him credit I will His link to his channel is down below in the description And he was one of the my favorite guests that I ever had on here before because he is extremely versatile he was ready to talk salary cap he was ready to talk free agents he was ready to talk film he was ready to talk literally everything and he did a phenomenal job i don't know why i haven't had him back on here in so long but i will soon but anyway lamar jackson we'd love to have him on here one day too but lamar jackson he was featured in a complex magazine interview and he gave us a reminder of why Baltimore Ravens fans are so smart and extremely observant. When Lamar Jackson first showed up to the facility about maybe a month ago, maybe a little less than that, he showed up and Ravens fans noticed something a little different. They said, hold up, Lamar Jackson, this swole Lamar Jackson ain't as swole as he once was. It had looked like he slimmed down significantly, but we didn't get the details on how significantly he slimmed down. All we could go by was video, and we saw the video of him coming in the building. We said, whoa, okay, hold up, Lamar, you, you done slimmed down something. So it got people thinking, oh, man, if Lamar really slimmed down like it's looking like, ooh, he was, all, he was still fast. He was still fast even though he bulked up, but he had definitely slowed down a tad bit, a tad bit. But now if he's slim again, well slimmer, then that speed is definitely going to be there. And remember too, now even though he was slimmer before, nobody ever questioned or should have questioned his arm strength because he still had a big arm even though he was slimmer. So I wouldn't expect the arm strength to, to fall off or anything like that because the arm strength was always there. That's actually one of the most underrated aspects of Lamar Jackson's game. So y'all better stop playing with that boy, man. Quit it. But you, if you think about Lamar Jackson, the slimmer Lamar Jackson, even faster Lamar Jackson, and at this point of his career, this point at the, the stage that his career is in, my goodness, it's, it's, it's scary, man. It's scary. Like my guy Nitty Gritty Sports Talk said, it's about to get spooky. Spooky for the NFL. I mean, you was already scared of Lamar Jackson as is. But just imagine him that much faster, even faster, even more agile. Ooh. <laughs> and another year in this offense, so even more comfortable in it. Even though with Lamar Jackson, like, look. They could, Ravens could let go of Tom Munkin and get a, a new offensive coordinator tomorrow, and I think it would be a realistic expectation that Lamar Jackson would get another MVP because whenever he gets a new offensive coordinator, he just gets an MVP. That's all he does. That's, that's, that's all he does. And he, so he's two for two, shooting 100% with new offensive coordinators. So, but shout out to Tom Munkin, though. We, we, we don't want Tom Munkin to, <laughs> to go anywhere. But Lamar Jackson, he did uh, clear up, not even rumors, he cleared up what Ravens fans knew. Um, because he said in 2022, he was at 230. Uh, he said in 2023, he was at 215. And he said now he's at 205. So that, that 25 pounds down in two years. So that, that's a significant amount of weight. I got to take lessons from Lamar because I'm going the opposite direction. But shout out to him, though, because he got it. He got it. And Lamar realizing, like, hold up, wait a minute. Now, I remember we did get a question from a subscriber. <laughs> One of my guys asked a question. He said, man, he said he looked concerned about Lamar Jackson losing the weight because he said maybe Lamar Jackson lost the weight because Ravens, they ain't really addressed the offensive line. Now, this was before the draft. But still, he's like, oh, maybe Lamar Jackson thinking like, man, I'm going to have to run a lot more than I used to now to get away from these uh, pass rushes. But hopefully that won't be uh, the case. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we're going to see real soon uh, how this impacts Lamar Jackson. But it really should be all positives. I think Ravens fans got every reason to be excited for that. I mean, Lamar Jackson gives you every reason to be excited as a Baltimore Ravens fan in general. But this should really, really get you even more hype for the season that's coming up. Now... Um, in seasons in the past, uh, ever since 2020, this has been debated, even before 2020, it's been debated if Lamar Jackson really has that uh, clutch factor, if Lamar Jackson really got it when it comes to crunch time uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. And if you are a Ravens fan or not, you, 
you could have different opinions. Um, me personally, I feel like, oh yeah, we, we need a game winning drive. Oh yeah, look, Lamar could do that. Because he'll do it with his arm. He could mix in a bit of his legs too. Uh so he got so many different ways that he can get the yards, uh, that it's like, oh yeah, yeah, he he can get it for sure. Or other people may feel like, oh no, I don't feel like Lamar Jackson's clutch. Because we've we've seen it on both sides. We've seen where hey Ravens need a game winning drive or something. And Lamar Jackson, boom, they, they go out and get it. Like, and one of my favorite ones, uh, especially with all the adversity that they faced, was last year against the Rams. Ooh, that, <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, my goodness, it was so beautiful. Um, but then, of course, there's also those games where Lamar Jackson may get a game-winning drive, but then the defense, they may fall short and give up points. Um, and then there's sometimes when Lamar Jackson, he's falling short before two when it comes to a game winning drive but more times than none Lamar Jackson he gonna give it give us what we need uh as Baltimore Ravens and help us show that clutch factor that he so definitely has and the numbers since 2020 the numbers Warren Sharp brought out the numbers Again, we talked about how Lamar Jackson loses the offensive coordinator. He gets a brand-new offensive coordinator. He's two for two for getting MVPs whenever he gets a new one. Those are numbers. Those are facts. Warren Sharp said, the most clutch quarterbacks when you got to have it, trailing in the last five minutes since 2020. Number one, Joseph Burrow. Number two, Joshua Allen. So Lamar Jackson's counterparts. Number three, Lamar Jackson. All right, I like that. Okay, Lamar Jackson, number three on that list of clutch QBs when you got to have it within the last five minutes. So Lamar Jackson delivers most of the time, most of the time. That AFC Championship last year, oh, my goodness. I mean, none of Ravens offense really delivered in that AFC Championship. And, I mean, there's, there's some things that could have definitely flipped it. Like, remember the Zay Flowers fumble at the one-yard line? Ooh. The Lamar Jackson interception uh, into the end zone? Ooh. No, but anyway... Lamar Jackson delivers more times than he doesn't. But for him to be atop that list or close to the top of that list, um, when you got other names, then th again, this is since 2020. Now, I don't know why he chose 2020, but it's since 2020. Number four, in that time span, not overall. Obviously, overall, it's probably going to go to him. But in that time span, num number four is Tom Brady. And number five is Patrick Mahomes. Now, they also got number six, Nick Foles. He not even a starter anymore, and he hasn't been one for a while. Is he still even in the league? I don't even know. <laughs> and then they got number seven, uh, C.J. Stroud. So I guess he made a big impact in showing his clutchness uh, as a rookie because he's already on this list. Uh, thank goodness that that clutchness was not displayed against our Baltimore Ravens. But that boy, C.J. Stroud, uh, is nice. Now, with Lamar Jackson again. Speaking of Lamar Jackson, a lot of Lamar Jackson talk in this video. Um, last year, we faced a lot of playoff teams. Uh, we faced a lot of winning teams. And I remember in a lot of those games, going into a lot of those games, I would be nervous. I'd be nervous thinking, oh, man, this could be a close one. This could be one of them stressful games. This could be one of them games where it's like, ooh, well, what's going to happen? And the only one that I recall that actually was close was the Rams game because they were a playoff team last year, and that game went to overtime, and that game was insane. It was amazing, but it was insane, and that just took us through literally every single emotion that it possibly could have taken us through. But against other playoff teams like the 49ers, like the Dolphins, like the Seahawks, like the Lions, like, like against all these other playoff teams, Ravens dominated. They dominated, and those games were not close. Um, the only other playoff team where they split it was, um, was the Browns. Because the Browns, they took care of business in one week uh, in Cleveland. But then in Baltimore, the Browns, they took care of business again. Then that's what, yeah, well, anyway. Um, but, yeah, so pretty much the Ravens, they dominated most of the playoff teams uh, last year. And they won more games than they didn't. But, <coughs> excuse me, woo! Shout out to Ric Flair. Well, actually, no, not a shout out to Ric Flair. Because y'all saw that video of him being re really rude at the restaurant? Anyway, um, around the NFL, put this out they said and this is per nfl research it said ravens to face a league high 10 2023 playoff teams the second toughest strength of schedule in 2024 
So you could look at that and be like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? That's, that's scary. And it could look scary when you say it out loud and when you read it. But then when you realize, like, hold up now, these are still the Baltimore Ravens. They've still got Lamar Jackson. And they've already shown that they can hang with the best of them. Now, they still got to work on being the best and hanging with the best in the clutchest moments of the postseason. But as far as regular season, like, yeah, oh, the, the, the schedule is tough. The opponents are strong. But the Baltimore Ravens, they've shown that they, they'll, they'll be just fine. So while this number of a uh, league high, league high 10 2023 playoff teams, that's the Ravens got to face. Hey, you get a first place schedule, uh, hello, you got to do that. And then, of course, the Ravens are playing the AFC West as well. And there's, gonna, there's been rumors floating around about the schedule already, but the schedule is going to drop on May 15th. So that is uh, next week. We're going to be getting the, the Ravens schedule. So. That should be fun, and we'll, of course, go over that all together. Now, um, one last thing, one last tidbit uh, that is, is scary to think about because, you know, in these drafts, um, they could go so many different ways. You always hear stories about how this team wanted that guy, that team wanted this guy, and the, all the trades that happen and all the, the trades that work out, all the trades that don't work out so much. But um, this was a move that w literally would have changed everything about the Baltimore Ravens. Adam Schefter reported during the 1996 draft. 96 now. Y'all know that was a historic draft. You know, a little J.O., a little R.L. Anyway, during the 1996 draft, the Packers had Ray Lewis on the phone and were ready to pick him 27th. So they were talking to Ray. They're like, hey, Sugar Ray. Hey, we were, well, they probably didn't call him that. They probably called him Cheesy Ray. Hey, we about to have you in the building. You about to come through. Yeah, you're an undersized linebacker, but you eat enough cheese. You're going to get oversized quick, Ray Ray. But they had Ray Lewis on the phone and were ready to pick him at 27th. But moments, just moments before they could, the Ravens picked Ray Lewis at 26th. And Patriots de facto GM Elliot Wolf was in the Packers war room that day and he remembers it well. He talked about that on the Adam Schefter podcast. So just think about that. If the Packers instead of the Ravens would have selected Ray Lewis, everything would have been much different. Could it have been much different in a good way? Would it have been much different in a bad way? I'm glad we will never, ever know. Team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn them notifications on so you do not miss out a single video or update or anything that goes on. And make sure you leave a like on the video because it helps us out a ton. It helps YouTube out a ton and it helps out your algorithm a ton. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for making this so much fun. Y'all continue to be amazing people and we out.